Well, I do declare. Hey guys, it's me, Blair St. Clair, and welcome back to my channel. I'm super, super, super excited about this video. Today, we are doing a super bronzed, smoky, seductive, sexy look that's perfect for summer. Instead of waiting for summer to actually happen, I wanted to bring summer to me in my own home and share it with you guys and give you a nice, seductive, sexy, but beach ready sun-kissed look. So get ready to taste the beach with me and we're all gonna get a little sunburn along the way. So let's go ahead and get this makeup started. I have already shaved my face, I've cleaned my face, I've prepped it, I've primed it, and I've moisturized my face all off camera. If you wanna see exactly how I get my face makeup ready, go ahead and click the link down below. I have a video all on skincare, my routine, and exactly what I like to do to get my face in top tip condition for the perfect makeup application. And I've also done my eyebrows. Now, so many people ask me about my eyebrows, so if you would like a video on eyebrows, please comment below because I will do one. But I did it off camera to save some time, so let's just jump into the video. I always start with priming my eyelids. Today I am using one of my old faithfuls. It's Max Studio Fix. Um, long wear concealer in the shade NC10, which is really, really, really bright and really light. So I packed it all over my eyelids and blend it out with a brush. Just that way I have that really nice seamless base. Now that my lids are primed, I am using one of my favorite, favorite palettes of all time. This is um, from Anastasia Beverly Hills and it's one of their neutrals and all their shades. As you can tell, she's been well loved and well used and abused. I want to create something really bronzed. I want to do something that has a lot of drama to it. So I'm going to stick with this neutral palette. One of those neutral shades, I'm using a little bit of a deeper shade to emphasize my crease shade. So that's what I'm going to start with. And I like to use a really small, tight brush. If you can see, the bristles are very, very small. It's not big, it's not loose, it's not fluffy. And I'm just going to start applying that right in the crease and creating and defining where I want that new shape and the new lid to be. Because I want my eyes to look like a baby doll. I want them to be open, I want them to be wide. I want drama. I want drama for my mama. Drama for all the mamas. So now that I have finished creating that new socket that I want, then I'm taking the same size brush, but a different brush, completely clean, and I'm just going to fluff out the edges of the shadow that I just laid down. So this brush has no product on it, it's completely clean, and it's just going to really glide over those edges to help smoke it out a little bit and give a really soft transition. I'm always so afraid of trying something new and doing garage door eyes. A garage door eye is when you have one solid color over your entire eyelid, and it's very 80s, no one likes that. Now with a condensed fluffy brush. Now what I consider a condensed fluffy brush is that it's fluffy in the term that it has like a lot of wiggle room and it's really gonna help spread makeup, but it's also condensed where the majority of the bristles all go to one area. Like a little bitty, little bitty, little area, like a little tuft, so cute. No, I wanna like pet it. So cute, yes you are. Yes you are. Yes, you're a good little brush, you're good. Oh, okay, sorry. On the very, very outer edge of that shadow, that I just laid down. Now, I'm not trying to blend out the makeup and like really have one color on the lid. What I'm doing is I'm just blending that very, very, very edge. So what I'm wanting to create is like a dark line to a soft diffused area. Not a soft diffused line, like a diffused area. Now to add just a little bit of seduction, a little bit of sexiness to this look, I'm gonna take a black eyeshadow with another small condensed fluffy brush. And I'm just going to add this in the corner of the eye on the crease. So this is on the lid space that we haven't had any eyeshadow to yet. And I'm just adding some black and just packing this on the outer edge. I wanna slightly blend it in to that brown neutral shade that we've already applied as well. But this is just gonna add a little bit of depth before we go in and cut the crease. Call it, we're adding sex to the eye sex to the eye. You know when you see people and they have like makeup all the way back here? Yeah. Let's not do that today. Except not looking too great right now. Now onto the step of the makeup that I both love and I both dread. Because I love precision, I love detail, I am extremely, extremely OCD. So cutting the crease, the next thing that I wanna do I love because I love the precision of it, but I also hate it because of the precision of it. 
So I'm taking the NC10 from MAC that I used earlier on my, to carve out my eyebrow and also put on the base of my lid. Taking that and I'm gonna sharpen up this line. This is giving me the most anxiety, the most. Cutting this lid like I'm gonna cut someone in line to get to the front of the buffet. Ain't nobody wants me in the back of the line of the buffet. I may be little, but I can eat, let me tell you. I can throw down at a buffet. So now I'm gonna take this really shimmery, pretty gold color. It's almost like a rose gold. It's really, really, really pretty. I'm gonna pack this all over the lids of my eyes, in case you forgot what I was doing. Eyelid, lid, eye, eye of the lid. Eye of the tiger. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna pack it on the eye of the tiger. Don't know where that English accent came from, or lack thereof, but you're welcome. Oh, girl. It's about to be over. Yes, Gorge. She is living her best golden life today. Looks like she just got out of the tanning bed. I mean, honestly, everyone likes to be tan. Everyone likes little bronze. It gives you life, gives you color. I don't go tanning anymore. I used to, I don't know, shockingly enough, as pale and pinked skinned as I am, I used to be so dark. I was in the tanning bed twice a day. I would have two different tanning memberships. I used to tell people that I had a different name for one place that I went to go tanning, and then the other place is my real name. And now with just a little bit of a pure white pigment, I am going to take that right in the inner corner of my eye and pat that into the gold. Next is the part of my makeup that I do enjoy. It's not that I don't enjoy it, it's that I feel there's so much room for messing up, and eyeliner is that place. It's that place in my life that I say, okay, hold the brakes. Let's put a hold on everything. Not sure if we're gonna make it. Not sure if we're gonna get to our destination, but we're gonna hope and pray. I'm taking this liquid liner. It's from NYX Cosmetics and it's like, that's the point. So it's like a razor point, razor sharp. Really itty bitty felt tip. And I'm gonna go right in, oh gosh, pray for me. And I don't do the big crazy winged eyeliner that I know a lot of people like. I'm keeping this really, really, really close to my natural lash line and then flicking it out. Girl, we made it. She got there. I feel like celebrating. Ah, she got it. I like to create a line going back like to this area and that's the area that I wanna clean up. Imagine this is gonna take away from me having to like put tape in my eye before doing the eyeshadow so I get that really straight line. So I'm just gonna put a, I'm gonna put a makeup wipe right here and drag down. So I get that really, really, really sharp line and clean up any fallout. We do not want fallout on the makeup. No fallout boy, no fallout girl, no fallout eyeshadow. Absolutely not. Just taking a little bit of that primer all over. Especially putting on the areas of my skin that I just wiped away. You know, like when I wiped away that fallout eyeshadow, I also wiped away any kind of moisturizer I had on my skin, anything that I had to prep my skin. So you need to add that back in, but also this is like a pore filler. So I don't wanna go back into my pictures later and have to smooth them out. I don't wanna have to Photoshop and face tune out pores. A true talented makeup artist can do that with makeup. T, like the real, real, real. Today's an extra special day because I'm trying out a new foundation. Now I've read about this everywhere. I have heard recommendations of using this everywhere. And today's the day that I'm finally gonna put my face to the test with it. This is um, Hourglass's Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. Now I know that it is retailing for a little bit of a higher price point. So that's kind of honestly the true full reason why I've been waiting a while to try this foundation out. I like to use liquid foundations. Cream foundations are just too heavy, too thick. And once they're set down on your face, they crack, they crumble, they don't look as flawless and as seamless as liquid foundations do. So that's why I have turned my whole life around to using liquid foundations. This one is a little bit pricier, so that's why I waited. And it also is marketed as a medium to full coverage foundation. Now that is a, what I like to call, that is a, a little bit of a stretch. That is a little bit of a wives tale. That is a little bit of a myth because I've tried this product out on my hand. I use a little bit of a patch test to see if this was the right color for my skin. And this is a full, full coverage liquid foundation. And that's exactly what I've been looking for. I recommend that to so many people. If you want a full coverage foundation that is liquid, it is possible. Ooh, the moment of truth. I'm so ready for this moment in my life. I'm so excited. <sighs> yes. I can already tell Ooh, it smells really good too. I don't know what that smell is. It's 
good, whatever it is. Some good shit, man. Wow. This is stunning already. Now I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't want like a really, really, really full liquid foundation. I always want a full coverage foundation because if one day you're like, oh, I want a little bit less of a coverage, I want something that's a little bit, you can always dilute that down, add a little bit of oil, adding a little bit of like a primer or a strobe cream to your foundation. It can make it a little bit less coverage. You feel like it's kicky or too heavy for you. So go out there, don't be afraid to buy a more full coverage, a little bit more quote unquote thicker foundation because you can dilute it down. You're kind of getting two products for one. So I'm always like, I'm about that life. I like to save as much money as possible. I'm just using my favorite contour stick from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the shade Fawn. And it just gives my face a little bit of definition. It gives it a little bit of depth without going super, super, super dark. So I'm just using, now I'm gonna go in later and bronze the hell out of my skin. Like I want it to be tan, I want it to be bronze. I want it to be golden sun kiss, like sexy, seductive. Like that is very the look I wanna go for. So first, I wanna add all the depth into my skin, like the, the shadowing. And I like to use a brush to stipple this in just to get all of those shadows placed to where I want them to be, where I want them to live. So when contouring my jaw, I don't want to add sharpness to my jaw. I actually already have like a really feminine jaw. Thank you to the gods out there that wanted to bless me with femininity. Thankful. So what I want to do is I'm just going to outline the jaw and bring that shadow downward. I'm not trying to create a new shape. I'm just trying to create the effect so when I'm back here and I pose, you're going to see the shadow and the line of where the jaw is versus creating a new shape of or like tricking the eye. What I don't want is I don't want my jaw and my neck to blend together because that happens all the time with photos. If you see myself back here and it's just one color and there's no definition. So we're kind of putting that definition back in there just to make everything pop a little bit. After contouring, if you have any edges that seem like a little harsh, you can just take a sponge and just soften out the little edges. Give everything a really nice, smooth transition. Before I actually go in and contour my nose, I like to highlight areas first. So I kind of call this pre-highlighting, but this isn't the sense of the term pre-highlighting that some celebrity makeup artists do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my concealer and I'm going to brighten up my face before I go in and contour the nose. Just because I find that when you're contouring your nose, it's easier to put the contour on after the highlight has been put on because if you highlight afterwards, sometimes you can make the nose look much larger. And I want a nice, dainty, cute little nose. Like a itty bitty, like I want to look like a who from the who of Whoville. Like I want an itty bitty, teeny little nose. So this is kind of the map and the guideline of where I want to highlight. Just the t usual T-zone areas of the face, but what's a little different with where I highlight and contour where most people do is I see a lot of people really like to bring their highlights down and then back up. I have a really narrow face to begin with and I wanna create a little bit more wideness through here. I want my cheeks to look a little bit more plump, a little bit more perky. I don't really need a whole lot of slimming in this area of my face because I do have more of a square face right here and then it kinda of tapers down a little bit. So with my highlighting, I wanna pull it out, not down, but just out to brighten up underneath the eye and bring the highlight all the way up against the nose. She's getting there. Ah! Oh! Ooh! Yes! I swear, when I make noises like that, I'm sure my neighbors hear me. I'm sure they think that, who is this crazy little boy next door to us that makes all these weird noises and comes out of the house looking crazy with all his makeup on? It me. <laughs> I'm gonna go in and contour my nose because every nice makeup needs a snatched, snatched nose contour. So I take the EDB brush with my contour stick, the same contour I've used before. Now that my nose is highlighted, I'm just going to slightly wiggle this down and brush this on onto my nose. Yes, girl. That's itty bitty nose. Now I would rather under contour my nose 
than over contour, meaning I would rather have less product and have it be like, okay, well, she could have gone a little bit further with her nose contour than go overboard because no one wants seeing two lines in the middle of your nose because it's the center focal point of the face. Go on the side of under contouring versus over contouring if you have to pick one. And now since we've done what I like to call pre-highlighting, we've put all the contours, the highlights, all the places that we want them to be, they're living where we want them to live. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of a brighter concealer. This is uh, the new Fenty Concealer by Rihanna. Loving, 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 loving. I'm just gonna pop this in the highest points of my face where I want the most brightness. So that's gonna be right here on the inner corners of my eye and onto the side of my nose, just to really, really, really add brightness here. Right into center, on top of my lip, center of my chin, and a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more right here. Now pro tip, if you let this sit and dry down for a minute or two, you're gonna get a higher, more coverage effect. And now that I let that sit for just about a minute, it's kind of like liquid baking. The product starts to dry a little bit, but because it's packed on in an area and it's not really thinly put on, it's not gonna fully dry down. So don't be too worried, unless you're using a product that dries down super, super, super quick. And I know that there's some out there that once you feel like you put it on, you have to like powder right away, or else it's gonna crease. Luckily, Rihanna doesn't do that. She knows what she's doing. She got us covered. Now I'm setting just my under eye with a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Eraser Powder in Fair. Now, when I say that this stuff really is magic, I really think it's magic. It has a light sheen to it, which means it's slightly shimmery. Now it's not shimmery. It's not gonna look like a highlighter at all. It just makes my skin have life in it underneath the eye. When you know when you pack too much powder underneath the eye, or you bake for too long, it can look dead. Now you know what I'm talking about. It can look like that crusty crust. It can look like the crust you cut off of the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that you thought you threw away but your dog got on the trash and ate but he actually threw up. That kind of crusty crust. So the Charlotte Tilbury with that itty bit of sheen in there and that un pink undertone helps cancel out any possible blueness, blah, 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 any possible blueness, any possible coloration, discoloration I mean under the eye, it adds a little bit of life to the skin, and sheen, and sucks the under eye. Now I'm gonna do something that a lot of people are not gonna like, or lack their, I'm not going to do something that a lot of people are not gonna like. I don't set my makeup with powder, really ever. I set the under eye, so that way it reduces some creasing, and obviously I get a little bit of creasing because I need a little bit of Botox in my crow's feet, like so. It's natural, people crease a little bit under their eyes and they smile. But I'm not gonna set the rest of my makeup with powder. Why? Well, I'm gonna powder all of this area, all of this area with contours, so I'm already powdering it. And I'm going to add highlighters that are powder-based here and here and like little different places in my face that are the higher points of my face. So that's powder. So basically, I'm powdering my face but I'm skipping the translucent powder step to set everything. Now, the reason why I can get away with this is because I'm using products that all dry down. Dry down means that once they're liquid foundations, liquid concealers that you place onto your face, they're going to sit there, they're going to oxidize for a moment, and now they're not gonna be, they're not gonna move. They're, 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 they act as if they're powdered, but they have their moisture locked inside them. Now, it doesn't work for everybody. If you feel, oh my gosh, I have to have that powder on my face, I have to have that lock and set, I gotta set it and forget it, all means you do you boo. But I don't like to set my makeup, I like it to feel fresh and lively and I think that it has more color to the skin if I don't set it. Now I'm using Marc Jacobs Tantric Bronzer. Now this is such a pretty bronzer. Like I told you, I want a really, really bronzed, really tanned look. I wanna look like I just went on a two week trip. Not a one week, a two week trip to the Bahamas. I got a lot of sun, a little bit of a sunburn on my shoulders, but I still covered it up, you know. We're okay, we didn't need to go to the emergency room. So I want some bronze. Now that we're nice and bronzed, we lightly cooked at 425 degrees in the oven. I'm gonna add just a little bit more shadow back into the makeup, just so you see a little bit more depth right underneath the cheekbone using the color Saddle. This is a bronzer from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Now with my favorite, favorite blush of all time, 
Peachy Love by Anastasia Beverly Hills, just to add even more warmth and really, really, really brighten up those cheeks. Cause they need some life. One of my biggest secrets is this highlighter. Now I love her and she retails at what? $5. I kid you not. This is from Primark and it's called, it's by PS dot 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 and it's called Frosted. It's a highlighter that I got when I was in London and I needed an extra highlighter. I didn't like have any Sephora nearby so I went to Primark and it's kind of like if you're in the US, it's a little bit like Target. I guess that's probably the closest. And so I was like, okay, I'll try this. This is everything. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of this and I'm gonna put it right on my cheekbone. The highest, highest, highest point of the cheekbone to brighten that up. Do you see that? Like, do you see that glow? That is a highlighter. That is, no words, no. No words! Off camera, I just applied a black coal liner to my bottom lash line. And the reason I did that is because my waterline has been really, really watery. There's so many allergens and pollen in the air right now. Even though I just took a lovely cocktail of Zyrtec, Mucinex, and Nasal Court Nasal Spray. So all that is helping my allergies, but still I get crazy watery eyes. I'm smudging out the eyeliner. As best as I can before my eyes start to water like crazy before it becomes waterfalls in here. And just to bring the gold back in, I'm taking a tiny, tiny bit of that gold that I used earlier to smoke out the very, 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 very edge. Ooh, this just brings all those colors together. It marries them like the good couple that they are. So I almost always revert to a nude lip. I think it's really sexy because it's not, especially it doesn't take away from the makeup look if I wanna do something dramatic. And so I'm kinda of doing this really tan, glowy, dramatic look. So I wanna do a really simple lip. This lip liner is in the color Anywhere Caffeine. So I like to just outline my lips first and then I'm gonna take a darker lip liner as well and just outline the outer corners to give a little bit of an ombre effect to my lips so that way they look extra plump and voluptuous like a kissy lip. <laughs> Get into this beach look. Ah, I'm living for her. Sun-kissed skin so hot can melt your popsicle. Ooh, girl. She's bronzed. She's sun-kissed. She's ready for a day at the beach. There will be no sunburn today because she is blinding the sun herself. I really wanted to feel my beach fantasy and I have been fulfilled. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial on bringing the summer sun to us a little bit early because we're impatient and I cannot wait for the next look that I'll be creating for you. So in the meantime, please like and share this video. Make sure that you're tuned in to all the new content that I'm posting and putting out into the world. So follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and make sure that you're subscribing to see all the new content that I'm putting out weekly. Mwah.